Welcome to Child Care Rockstar Radio. I am your host, Chris Murray. Child care leaders around the globe are breaking through challenges, leading the way in innovation, testing new best practices, and impacting children and families in a much more powerful and positive way than ever before. Each week, join me for interviews with early childhood leaders and experts that will leave you inspired to become the next child care rock star. Now, let's go. This is Child Care Rockstar Radio, episode 149, featuring Kay Boning. Hey, everybody, welcome back. It's Chris, your host, and I'm really happy to have you back here with me at the podcast. You'll be listening to this at the end of April if you're listening live. And if you're not listening live, then welcome back because who knows how far in the future you might be listening to this, which is kind of cool. One great thing about having a podcast is that we have global listeners and they come in in all seasons. And until this podcast is taken off the air someday, which maybe it'll live forever. So it's kind of a cool legacy. And if you're a fellow podcaster, please reach out to me and uh, let us know your show name and what inspires you, because I would love to promote your podcast if you're listening to my podcast. Today's guest is Kay Boning. She is one of a kind, folks. She is the founder and owner of Tomorrow's Promise Montessori in a rural town outside of Houston, Texas. She just won a big Small Business Administration Award for her schools, and she is an incredible leader. She is what I affectionately refer to as a piece of work (laughs) in a good way, all good things, as you will get to know Kay in this episode, um, at the end of the episode, we reveal the crazy wacky way that we met. So you're definitely going to want to listen to the entire episode because you'll get a kick out of it. You'll get some humorous moments throughout. And then I'm sure you'll be laughing along with us about the story of how we met. Uh, before we dive into it, I want to thank ProCare. ProCare Software is our sponsor for today's episode with Kay. And ProCare wants you to imagine a day when the hours you'd spend on time consuming administrative work for your childcare business could instead be spent doing what you love nurturing the children in your care or caring for your team or doing something completely different, but not doing administrative paperwork and hassles. <laughs> and that's what ProCare brings. Two out of three child center businesses that use child care management software choose ProCare. That's two out of three, guys. That's because as the number one rated platform, ProCare helps owners and directors manage every part of their business while saving hours of time, up to 54 hours a month. That's a gobs of time. Ready to learn how ProCare can partner with you every step of the way to support the success of your childcare business? Request a demo today at ProCare.Solutions forward slash Rockstar. And thank you for putting the entire link in there so we can get credit. They want to know if we are sending traffic their way. Uh, Again, it's ProCare.Solutions forward slash Rockstar. All right, here on the podcast, I cannot believe that we're almost to episode 150. You know, I started this podcast in 2017. We've done all sorts of formats and flows in terms of timing. We've done weekly, bi-weekly, and every third week. Um, But I keep going and keep creating it because it is a labor of love. I do enjoy it so much, and hopefully that comes through to you, my listener or my viewer. If you haven't viewed the podcast, I want to remind you that it is available on YouTube. So you can just search it up on YouTube. And also we recently launched on Spotify uh, about a month and a half ago. So if you haven't checked it out and you like Spotify, you might enjoy listening to it there as well. We are taking all voices on our podcast. We would like to have more people leave questions and leave us a voicemail and feature you, and you can win a prize for doing so. And all you have to do to do that is go to childcaresuccess.com and click on podcast at the top navigation bar. And you'll see a little black button on our main podcast page, which says leave a voicemail for Chris and the team. You just click that it's on the side of the page and it'll expand out and you just put your voice in there and I'll leave us a message and we'll play it on the podcast. And we would love to hear from you. So please, please 
take a moment and uh, ask a question or leave some feedback. We would love to hear from you. And I can't wait to dive in and have you meet Kay Boning. She is so cool and so fun, and she's really transformed her school and her leadership. Uh, her culture has absolutely transformed. She tells that story. And she has grown her enrollment substantially. She was one of our finalists with our child care rock star contest last fall in Nashville at the summit. And she has an incredible story of transformation and lots of results that she's gained from following the roadmap that we laid out for her in the academy and also from just networking with like-minded success-oriented owners and leaders. So uh, without any further ado, I would love for you to enjoy this episode, meet Kay, uh, make notes, write down some writer downers that you're going to hear from this episode and take action on what you hear on every episode of this podcast. They're all different and unique. And if you just take action from the nuggets that you gain in this podcast, you will have a hugely more successful business uh, even than ever before. So I can't wait to hear your success story. Maybe I'll feature you on a future episode of Child Care Rockstar Radio. So please do reach out, let us know uh, how we can serve you better. If you have any suggestions for guests, if you have a podcast of your own, you'd like me to promote. And most of all, please do leave us a voicemail because we would love to hear your question and hear your beautiful voice. All right, everybody, enjoy it. Uh, strap in for the ride with myself and Kay Boning here on Child Care Rockstar Radio. Let's go. Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. I'm thrilled that you're here. And my guest today is an incredible woman who's achieved a ton in her life and in the world of child care, Miss Kay Boning. Kay, how are you? I'm doing good. Good. Welcome to the podcast. Glad to be on. So where are you right now? I am actually in my dining room with Excellent. the fake tomorrow's promise background. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love the fake background. It's fantastic. Mine happens to be real, but I do have a faux plant back there, which nobody knew before I said that. So here we are on the podcast <laughs> revealing things. I'm going to have you reveal a fun fact today on the podcast. But before we get there, you just got a very, very cool award. Yes, so I did. Share with everybody what just happened to you with regards to some community um, recognition. I got nominated by the SBDC, Small Business Development Center, um, for the SCORE SBA um, Houston District Small Business Owner of the Year Award. And I am the first person to ever get the award. It's a brand new category. And I'm super stoked about it because um, we're just a child care center and, you know, beat out, you know, tech companies and, you know, medical people and all these people that, you know, are well known for making a difference in the world and stuff. And so I'm, I'm super excited to bring child care and have that award for, for our industry. I think it's neat. Yeah. Congratulations to you. And I think it's super cool that also you were in there with all these other kinds of businesses and industries and the world of Montessori and childcare and early learning is getting lots of kudos in your neck of the woods. Well, so and Houston fantastic. is a huge, huge district. I mean, yeah. Texas is a, is a pretty big state. And, and it's growing. You know, so I was very, very honored to even be nominated, let alone win. I like that rock star award thing that, you know, I got third place oh, in October with. <laughs> So I brought Kay to the podcast for many reasons, one of which is because she was so brave to enter herself into the child care rock star contest that we do annually at the summit, not just once, but twice. And on the second time, she got into the finalist round and then she was our second runner up or came in third place, but it doesn't matter because what you're all winners. Cause you were a winner that you put yourself out there and you got on stage, you told your story. <laughs> and so now you're here at the podcast today to tell your story. So well, that's kind of an interesting story because I am a very shy person and would have never imagined that I would get up on a stage in front of people. I would have laughed hysterically if you'd told me that five years ago. <laughs> well, that's a cool lesson for all of everybody who's listening is what are you doing now? Or what have you done recently that if your younger self knew that if they could fast forward, you could fast forward them in a time machine to something 
that it'd be like, oh my God, it never in a million years would you be able to tell me that my future self would do that? Oh, this whole thing. Yeah. I told my dad when I was 14, I was never, ever, ever, ever having children. And I have three <laughs> biological children for every hour I said, and then God has a wonderful sense of humor. He threw in the school after that. Right. So you have hundreds of more children. Yes. I love that. So um, tell us more about Tomorrow's Promise, your beautiful Montessori brand. Give us just the kind of stats about the business, size, capacity, locations, how many, you know, all of that stuff. Okay. We're located in Huntsville, Texas. Um, it's a small community. Uh, I am licensed at the first location for 255. The second location is licensed for 81. And I'm still waiting for the city to approve my permit for the third location that we're trying to break ground on and have been for the last six months. Yay. <laughs> Frustrated with the city right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, you and lots of other people who are in expansion mode. Uh, including, it's a process. Yeah. One of our coaches, Coach Donna, she's been working on uh, a center for, I don't know. I feel like she's been working on it for at least two years. So don't say that. Don't I know. That. And then another one of our coaches, Steve Lloyd, he's been working in Denver on one of his for a couple of years. So it sometimes it takes longer than we would like for sure. What about, what is your enrollment looking like right now? How are you feeling now that we're in a post COVID world with hiring and enrollment? You know, how do you feel things are going for you in general in your business climate? Well, in Huntsville, we are not a childcare desert. So there are plenty of childcare centers in our town. The Key is to distinguish ourselves from other places and what we offer. I've been working on that for 25 years. Half the people don't know what Montessori is. Right. And so it's a it's an educational process. And just getting the word the word out, being out in the community has really helped. And uh, our enrollment, we have a few openings at the first center, um, just a few, mm -hmm. and the second center. Um, need to hire a couple more teachers and I can open up a couple more classrooms, but, you know, we're not there where we have to have those classrooms open yet. So cool process of still growing in a little process. Bit. Yep. Well, certainly for the first center to be at 255 and for, to only have a handful of slots is that's a very vibrant and thriving center. So yeah. Congrats on that. That's huge. So tell us a little bit about your journey. How did you get into this crazy, wacky world of ECE? And how long have you been doing it? Oh, a little over 30 years, probably. I got into it. I had an 18-month-old son, and I was actually, I was working on my second bachelor's. I was going to become a CPA. And I was 21 hours away from sitting for the CPA exam with a 4.0. <laughs> <laughs> I was having fun teaching my 18 month old things. And I thought, what am I going to do when I'm old? Get people that say I got people out paying taxes or that I made a difference in a child's life. And so I kind of had this midlife crisis, maybe at 25 <laughs> and switched my major from one day to the next, finished that semester out in accounting. And the next semester I was enrolled in a master's degree in education. Wow. And then I kept comparing how he was learning at the Montessori school he was at to what I was learning. And I decided I didn't want to be a public school teacher. I wanted to be a Montessori teacher. And hmm. then we then we moved to Huntsville and it was like, okay, I'm going to open my own school. Nice. Love that. I'm probably one of the only idiots to ever have taken the training and two weeks later opened the doors to their, to their school. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not sure that's true because I know there's a lot of people that have done that thinking this can't be so hard, right? This is well, easy. I, 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 I grew up, my dad ran a trucking company and okay. I grew up knowing what it's like to be a business owner yeah. and how hard you had to work and things like that. And so God had a wonderful way of preparing me. My first job out of college was doing marketing and advertising for a bank and then I also ended up in the financial loan department, the checking account. I mean, I learned all aspects of banking. So then I was going to become a CPA. My family, my dad, my uncle, my brother are CPAs. Well, my dad's not a CPA, but uh, ran his own company, did the book work. And so then I changed it to education. 
And so I thought I had all the things that I needed to know in order to have right. a bit, run a business. Well, and then I, and then I met Chris. <laughs> So we're going to dive into that journey. It's cool that you have the financial background. Uh, my dad was a CPA. And so I have growing up around the dinner table with spreadsheets and, well, he used to do it in big gra- oh, yeah. uh, the accounting paper, you know, mm-hmm. and he would show me like how he makes columns and how he tracks everything. And then he had his 10 key and his fingers were as fast as, you know, the road runner. And I'd be like, I would watch him with wide eyes. Um, you want to know something amazing? Yeah. My grandfather could outdo anybody on a 10 key in his Really? Head. Oh my God. I wish my grandpa, your grandpa would uh, do a 10 key race against my dad. Well, my dad can run the 10 key and so can I, but he, <laughs> we could not keep up with grandpa. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we both have that background. So that's super cool. Now tell us a fun fact about yourself that hardly anyone knows. I can't wait. <laughs> Well, there's two actually. Okay. They're kind of semi-related. All right. One, I met Rick on match.com. Oh, I love that. That's fun. Now, how long have you guys been married? 18 years. Okay. Match.com was around back then, huh? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And I have always been a car nut. Okay. Love that. I um, played with Hot Wheel cars when I was a child. My dad's a car nut, rebuilds old cars as a hobby. And one Right after meeting Rick, I took him to dad's house and uh, dad let him drive one of his cars and another little car monster was born. So we have 13 old cars that really uh, mm-hmm. do they 13, all run? They're turning running. We have a 14th one that is a basket case that I am trying to hire somebody to fix and put together. Yeah. So, but cool. We actually have seven retro T birds. Wow. So next, did you show your picture of your car collection in your Rockstar slideshow? I don't remember seeing any of this. Oh, this is cool. This is super cool. So do you have a personal favorite vehicle? This is a question I must ask. Um, I, the, the T-Birds. The, I like driving all the of them. Yeah. It doesn't matter which one. <laughs> They're all different. They're all different. Um, we have a black one that is his T-Bird is the license tag on it. Then we have a white one that's her T-Bird. Then we have a um, California Roadster that's called, that is our T-Bird. And then we have another California Roadster um, Cal- uh, that is our T-Bird 2. And then we have a 007 T-Bird, a 50th anniversary T-Bird, and a... 2002 T-Bird that's yellow that he named Francis because his mother's favorite color was yellow and she passed away. So about him, bought it and come remember to wow. her. Okay. So. My favorite color is yellow. So when I come down and visit you, I want to have a ride in that yellow T-Bird. I also have an orange Corvette. Oh, um, convertible. Love that too. That's super cool. I might have that's, to ride in that one too. Yeah. It's our same Houston orange color. So okay. it's like perfect for the <laughs> for the college parades yeah, and a green Pontiac solstice convertible that works great for the high school parades. Nice. So awesome. Yeah. Look at you guys. I had no clue. This is a whole nother fun fact side about K that I had no clue. This is very, very cool. Yeah. Did I threw a fit when I was about two years old because my brother got hot wheels cars for Christmas and I did. Yeah. And so there every year I had it in my stocking, a hot wheels car along with my brother. Nice. So, yeah, I had three brothers, regular brother and two step, and they used to all play with the Hot Wheels and they had all the loop de loo track and the whole mm-hmm. thing. And so I used to play with them. I was yeah. right, right alongside. Very, very cool. So, um, thanks for sharing that. So, you had mentioned earlier about making sure that your school has special messaging, unique benefits, that it sets itself apart from the rest. Because there is, sounds like there's a, you know, handful of competition in your town mm-hmm. since you guys are not a childcare desert. So tell us more about that. What are, I mean, obviously it's a Montessori. I don't know if it's the only Montessori, but. It's the only one for at least 60 miles in any direction. Okay. So that is your leading differentiator, <laughs> right? Well, we've been called the monastery. Oh. 
the Montessori school <laughs> and my plumber for two years called us the rotisserie school. Oh my God. So I'm not That's sure if we hilarious. were. <laughs> okay. How we were rotisserieing things. The rotisserie but... <laughs> school. Wow. So, um, you know, um, you have, <laughs> <laughs> we've been called a little bit of everything. So besides Montessori, yeah. uh, we have the largest playgrounds in town. Okay. And we have playgrounds that are designed for each age group. We also have bathrooms in every classroom. Um, they don't have to go down the hallway to go to cool. the bathroom. Yeah. Some of my teachers, we have, gosh, about over 200 years of experience with teachers. I have one te um, That's cool. assistant been with me 24 years, another one 20 years, a couple of people 12 years, um, several five years. And then when you've tripled in size in the last year and a half, mm -hmm. two years, you know, we have a lot of newbies, but right. several of those have been with us for a year. Well, mm -hmm. um, cool. I love that. You know, that's one of my favorite features or benefits is the long tenure, the 200 years of experience under our roof, the uh, <clears throat> teachers that have been with us longer than an average uh, compared to the, you know, yeah. industry, all that stuff. So that that's one of my favorites. So way to go on that. That's huge. We're a Texas Rising Star four-star vendor. Okay. And there's only one other center in town that's a Texas Rising no, There's two other centers in town. One's a three and one's a four-star. Um, we have a parents' night out. Um, we're open from 5 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. Okay. So we're catching two shifts uh, for the prison workers. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing the Dolly Parton Imagination cool. Library program. Yes, love that. We'll talk more about that. I want to talk about that. Cool. And um, we also, the first two locations are all located in houses. Okay. And so a lot of the children think I live there. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> or their teacher lives there. Let's go to Miss Kay's house this weekend. They'll be driving by or something. And, right. and uh, so it's more of a homey feel uh -huh. for the children to come in. And it's not that institutional feel. Yeah. Um, so that's one of the selling points. Now, our newest location will be a modular office building that's been converted. Okay. So for the people that want more of a traditional school feel, then that will appeal to them. So when you started and you were in, did you have, do you have more of a campus where you've added on houses so that now you have like four buildings across the 255 kids? Are they in multiple buildings on one campus? Is that how you grew? Talk the about first, how you... Right. Yeah. Um, we bought a house and uh, bought it in February and moved into it in May. And by August, we were buying the house next door that was up for sale. Okay. And um, we bought it August 15th and was licensed and opened and had all the remodeling done by the day after Labor Day. Uh, three years later, we were adding on and doubling the size of that building. A couple of years after that, the house behind us went up for sale. So it's a corner lot. So um, there's three houses and um, around the corner kind of thing. And then we moved in a portable classroom behind uh, one of the houses in the backyard. And then right before I found Chris, I bought the pink house across the street. And that was a absolute disaster nightmare house. And um, I wanted to buy it and rent it to people. And my husband wanted to bulldoze it and make a parking lot. And God said, use it for the school. And so we'd had this argument back and forth, you know, just kind of good natured, rent it, bulldoze it, rent it, bulldoze it. And so I was driving home one day and I felt like I'd been hit upside the head with use it by this, use it for the school. And I'm like, no, uh, don't want any more kids. Don't want any more parents. Don't want any more teachers. I, I'm done. No. And uh, I walked in the house and looked at, looked at Rick and said, use it for the school. I didn't even say hi. I just said, use it for the school. And he's like, I like that idea. And I'm like, no. <laughs> and that's when I realized that if I'm going to take and purchase another house and use it for the school, when we're at 40% capacity, that this is not only insane, but stupid, that I'm going to have to do something different. And it's about that time that... Um, I heard something about a child care summit, something or another called mm -hmm. Brian Dupre and said, you know, laughed at the book, um, 
a rock star million or child care millionaire. millionaire. I laughed. I bought it. I laughed. And then I called him and I said, okay, you know, I want to hear some more about this. And then I he talked me into attending this, the virtual summit, did that. And then I called him back and I said, what's this stuff in the resources? And what is all this about? What sh Start showing me. And he's like, well, here, I said, no, click that, click this, click that, click that. And um, so then I signed up. Cool. So you came to the virtual summit uh, 2020, and then you signed up for the Academy from there. And coach Brian was on my team at that time. He's no longer on our team, but Brian Dupre came up through my team and wrote that amazing book. And so I'm so happy that you got inspired by that. And we had a lot of people attend the virtual summit so much so that we were actually thinking maybe we would do another virtual event in the future because a whole nother group of childcare owners will come to a virtual thing versus coming to an in-person thing. But of course, we're going to be at the summit Orlando this year with about 1200 people. So at least a good chunk of people will get on an airplane and come to Orlando now that we're through COVID. But I'm really glad, Kay, that well, you see, came to the summit virtual and that you said yes. It wasn't COVID that, that you know, I mean, we've been open. We're, right. um, we're in a town with five prisons and mm -hmm. the city limits, seven within the county. So we right. were open to yeah. service, you know, to be there for the parents that had to go, you know, guard the inmates. Yeah. Um, but the only reason why I was able to come to the summit, and this is why I think you should consider doing some virtual, or, you know, yep. is because I didn't think the school could live without me. Exactly. And so you're missing a whole bunch of people when, you know, they can't, they feel like they can't leave the school. That's right. You know, and, and I've sat in a closet and half listened to the summit. That was my office away from things wow. in the supply closet. Wow. Um, and so I now have an office office. That's great. <laughs> now you have an office office and not only that, but you come to every Academy member quarterly meeting and summits that you can, other than the fact that you're taking care of your dad that's been in, in and out of the yeah, hospital. And if, but you'd quit, if you'd quit scheduling when I have my Dolly Parton fundraiser, oh, yeah. that'd help too. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'll try to do better in the future. Shame on me. <laughs> well, I moved, um, I moved this, the fall one up a week so it wouldn't coincide with the summit this next oh, yeah. year, just in case. And you moved, moved it up two weeks. So it's now the same weekend again. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> we always have conflicts. It's, it's, it's a bummer. It's hard to please I'm uh, just the, on you. a thousand people. I know you are. So I would like to, you know, dive into that. And when we talk about your rock star experience and your story and your transformation, um, which will be coming up here, I want to ask you about, you know, what, what does life look like now before you thought your business couldn't live without you? And how have you made that shift? I think that's probably the biggest hurdle that we help people overcome in coaching. So we'll get to that. But before we do, I want to ask you about leadership. So staffing, employees, employee management, hiring, hiring, you know, staff retention, those are like the biggest pain points in general, besides money management and enrollment. But you, the staffing is the thing that pulls at leaders because it's the thing that just can be overwhelming um, as a business owner, just dealing with staff. So what is your leadership style and how have you grown as a leader to help your team be more engaged and try to help not be driven crazy um, by team in general? Well, the first, the first thing is when I started the school, um, I wanted to be the kind of boss I always wanted. You know, mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to be that boss that, you know, everybody hated and, and, and so forth. Yeah. Um, and um, so I've had some pretty interesting bosses over the years. Um, and the little that I realized that when you become your own boss, so to speak, you have everybody bossing you around. I mean, yeah, you run your own business, but then you have the parents bossing you around. You have actually the teachers end up bossing you around. I mean, every licensing bossing you around, the fire department's bossing you around, everybody's bossing you around. <laughs> that was the first thing I didn't realize. I right. Thought, oh, I'm going to be my own boss. Um, but, um, <laughs> you know, especially in today's um today's society having empathy and sympathy and but still holding people accountable 
And that's a very hard walk to walk. Yeah. Because, you know, some of these people, you know, I can't give you Friday off. I've only got four people off on Friday. Well, I'll just quit. Or they just don't show up anyway. And then, you know, so some of there's a lot of diplomacy. And thankfully, right now, I have um, hired a person that's very good at interviewing people and um, is good at reading people. And I like everybody. I mean, I'll hire, yeah. I'll hire everybody and, and then I'm just disappointed because they don't do what they said they were going to do and stuff right. like that and I'm too trusting and and stuff so mm-hmm. I've hired somebody that doesn't just hire somebody because they're breathing <laughs> mm-hmm. so that's a huge writer downer for people because what Kay just defined is an area that she recognized is not her strength because she's too trusting and will hire everyone and not so good at discerning the a players from the c players mm-hmm. or worse so hiring somebody that is really good at that That's their jam. That's their wheelhouse and put them in charge of that will save you thousands of dollars in mistaken hires or staff turnover. So that person's paying for herself or himself. Yeah. You know, so that that's, I don't want that to blow by people because that's a huge, huge strategy. And the other thing when I first started, you know, I remember the very first thing that was told to me was hire, hire an extra person. And I'm like, I can't even afford the people I have. What do you mean hire an extra person? Right. You know, and I would rather do the bus run. I would rather do the the cleaning of the dishes and this and that because I didn't have the money to hire somebody else. Yeah. And I didn't realize how much I was shorting the business by doing that. Now that I've kind of developed out a team, um, I can do more working on the business. um, And I've not been in the classroom as much and things like that you know it's more of a I want to go in and do a bathroom break or I want to go in and help or something like that as opposed to I have to be in there um and so that was that was a huge thing was was trying to extract myself from everything and I hate it I hate I want to know everything I want to know every little detail that's going on but then I tend to micromanage and so I'm getting better, not perfect, but better about having people deliver reports to me as to what's going on and explaining this is what we did about things and letting go. And fortunately and unfortunately, that happened last year. Um, I was supposed to go to El Salvador for three weeks for a Montessori training. And the week before I took, I actually took a vacation. And then I came back for 12 hours and then got on the plane to El Salvador. So I missed four weeks in a row. I came back for three days and then dad got sick. And then I was gone another two or three weeks. Wow. And so, um, you know, they could reach me by phone at all times, but, you know, they're, they're running it. Yeah. Um, And then dad's been in and out of the hospital so much um, and different things have happened. And so the last six months been there but not been there I mean Mm -hmm. you know so if I hadn't hired those people and stuff and and right now I've told them that I'm not guaranteeing that I'm gonna be there tomorrow yeah that might be back in the hospital and you guys have got to take care of it and make make it go if I'm not here because I'm gonna go so well that peace of mind which has gotten you to elevate and what I say, uh, delegate and elevate and then work on your business and not have to be in the business and be able to go do what you need to do for your dad or whatever, whatever your causes are, et cetera, is everything. And so many people that listen to this podcast are trying to get there. So tell us just a little bit more about your administrative team structure. Who do you have in like helping you? You have a director, assistant director, enrollment person, like, or you have your hiring person. So what are the roles that you hired? Just give us a quick picture of what that looks like. We, in some sense, I say I'm an admin heavy, but it's okay. um, we have um, 10 people that are doing administrative things that I call the leadership team. Um, I've got um, uh, one, there's Rachel, who's the director over at the second location, 
Ashley's been there 20 years. She's going to be the director at the third location. But okay. right now she's the two-year-old teacher. Um, okay. She's also been in the office off and on over the years. So she's ready to go as soon as we Great. have it open. So I love um, that you're gro grooming her for a leadership position and you've been working with her to get her yeah. ready. So that's fantastic. Um, Charlotte's been here 24 um, years. She's kind of overseeing all of the operations. Um, she goes and fixes anything that's going on at the children's house or any uh, this location. Um, she'll be working at the third location. So she's working on onboarding and different things like that. Um, I have Shelby, who's a classroom teacher, but she's stepping into being more and more of the director at the first location and helping Charlotte because Charlotte's role is expanding to be kind of over all three locations. Okay. Then I hired two people to quote be office runners, <laughs> basically to do bathroom breaks <laughs> and do whatever needed to be done. The, the, it's just because it's chaotic when you have 50 teachers, they all got to go to the bathroom, yeah. you know, and things. Yeah. And so the office runners have kind of morphed into, by the time I found out more of their experience and, and things that they were good at, mm -hmm. one of them is now enrolling okay. and doing all the tours cool. and answering the phone. The other one has turned into our kind of our HR person and is hiring and cool. um, doing the schedule and things like that. Okay. So um, that kind of has worked its way into they're still yeah. doing office runner stuff kind right. of thing too, but they have um, their specializations. Yes. Very, I love that. Um, and then um, I had a, just one of those wild opportunities. Um, one of the, I have a rent house and um, the renter was getting back together with his first wife. And it's a very long story it would make a lovely, wonderful Harlequin's romance movie kind of thing. Uh, it's a funny story. But anyway, they got back together. And uh, she has a master's degree in accounting. And so he has been my renter for several years. And he's like, why don't you go apply? You know, I, you know, Kay seems like a nice person. Why don't you go apply at her place? And I'm like, why do you want to work for me? You've got a master's degree. I mean, I can't afford you. And we worked it out and she's been doing, you know, the, the billing and all of that kind of stuff and um, working on the budget and doing food program, things that, you know, used to take up a lot of my time. Um, so she's, she's doing all this accounting type stuff and, um, <clears throat> cool. and uh, then, Love that. then I had a chance to hire a marketing person. Oh, and so um bring that in house too. Fantastic. Market, marketing and special events. All right. So our two fundraisers and things like that are, mm -hmm. are being handled by this one person now. Cool. So because I was doing all that. So so that's I think really helpful for people to listen to. Yes, it's a lot of admin, but also you're staffing up for your for your third center. You have a regional or executive direct, director, regional manager that's about to step up to manage all three. So you're scaling up for growth and you could easily yeah. plug in a fourth center under that structure if yes. you wanted to. Because all the marketing is being handled one one person, one person's handling all the hiring, one person's handling all the, the tours, goes to each location to do the tours. Um, and the important thing of that is, yes, it might be admin heavy, but every single one of those people will go in a classroom. Right. If we have that many teachers out or whatever. Right. Um, in fact, the other day, um, Courtney told me, she said, I don't mind going in a classroom. I don't have any experience. And I need to know that side of the business, too. Cool. So cool. You know, the, the, the shift in mindset for yeah. me and for people that have been with me for a long time, and then to see the new people coming in and having that same shift of mindset to growth and, and want to know more is mm -hmm. just is it's keen. It all started with that one day, that one day when it's used it for the school. And I'm like, no, darn it. I have to do something. Right. And that was changed. This six inches right here. Yes. Had to change before anything else could have happened. 
And she's pointing to her head for those of you that are watching and that are listening to this on Spotify or whatever. Yeah, this is um, six, six inches between the ears. Yeah. So that is everything. What you just laid out is perfect because that's what I do. That's what we do in coaching is we help you with your mindset and shift and make that leap for yourself for what's possible for you. And then you started layering it in over the last three years. Mm -hmm. Right. So I love that. Yeah. Um, two and a half, really. So, so then you competed for Rockstar and you told your story on stage in Nashville. And anything about that that you want to share? Because you kind of just your transformation story, you kind of just shared it with where you were and where you are now and how you got there. And basis of everything is mindset. But anything that you want to, anything else you want to share about that? for people listening who might be in the situation that you were in back in 2020? Um, gosh, whether it's finances, I mean, I was a balance transfer queen uh, with 29 credit cards. Right. How much time and energy and worry and just shifting. It's like you're playing a shell game all the time. So that's yeah. a big fat um, pain in the butt. Then, you know, I had somebody... I had two teachers come in one day fighting. I mean, literally just yelling and screaming at each other. Three people, different, three other people came in the office crying. And I was trying to train a brand new person. Um, and um, I was trying to be very specific with her too. I've just, you know, because there's 5,000 things you've got to know. And I'm like, okay, I want you to learn this part right here. That's all we're going to do today. Then tomorrow we'll learn something else. And then all these people come in with this, I mean, I don't know if it's the full moon, Friday the 13th, and how, uh, you know, party day and picture day all thrown together or, or what. Right. <laughs> I have never, never, we've never had that bad of a day. And needless to say, she didn't come back the next day. <laughs> so, when, when, people talk, when people talk about a toxic culture, yeah. no, no, we had that one beat. We had a lethal culture. We were <laughs> dropping people right and left. Yeah. You know, and you know just the people would you'd hire somebody and they, they leave at lunch mm -hmm. you know or go to the bathroom and come back right yeah you know, but and and i don't know if it was like the the teacher's attitude of the you know because we tried to put them in certain classes with the the best teacher but i don't know if that teacher was just burnt out on having a new another new person in her classroom all the time or you know exactly what was going on but we've right. got a handle on it we've we've changed that that mm -hmm. that that scenario and um well that, and let, let have, me share with have you people come in the office and cry yes we 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 yeah. have people you know their dog got ran over or somebody they get a phone call and somebody's family's passed away or something like that and we've got shoulders you know we're we're holding them and put you know um letting them cry on our shoulders and everything but that's different than what we've what we were having before. Yeah. You know. So my reflection is that it's you. You're so much calmer, more confident, more easygoing, easier to laugh. Um and how the owner shows up in the business is everything. So you're setting the tone for the culture and a lot of owners don't really realize this. Even if you're an absentee owner because the energy that you're putting into your company is what is being received by your leaders. And then that's what they show up with every day. And so what I, when I look at you, I see somebody who's completely transformed and that's now your business is now reflecting the new K the, you know, again, calmer, more delegated, more supported, easier going, uh, less stressed person. Do you still have stressful days? Yes, I am sure. I still have <laughs> stressful days, you know, but, um, that's what I see. I, I just had that conversation with my grandchild yesterday in church that the pastor was talking about the anxious generation and how the the children of today or the teenagers, um, young people have um, have grown up with so much anxiety and and that's a big thing. And she's has anxiety issues. Yeah. And I said, what did he say about that? And, you know, she's like, well, you know, trust God, not worry about it. I'm going, uh-huh. I said, do you think I have stress? Do you think I have things that I worry about or that I can be anx anxious about or whatever? And she said, well, yeah. And she says, you're running this company. And she's seen me at work because I'm trying to, she's 
she's kind of working for us a little bit cleaning because she hadn't graduated high school yet. And so she's doing some cleaning. She sees different things around around the office and stuff. And I said, and do I get stressed out or do I act as scared of things or afraid of things or anything? And she's like, no, you're always so calm and everything. <laughs> yeah. So one of our core guiding principles is trust, whether it's we say trust the process, trust each other, trust the universe, trust God. So I love that. Trust God and don't worry about it. Yeah. It's fantastic. So tell me about the Dolly Parton thing, because I know that people are listening and they're going, what's that all about? So Imagination Library, tell us the inspiration and what you're doing there. So Dolly Parton started a reading program for uh, just children in her community because her daddy couldn't read. And so she wanted to give books to the kids, children in her community to help their literacy rates. And then the popularity grew from her town to her county to the state of Tennessee. And then it's grown into all over the United States. It's in Canada. It's in the UK. It's in Australia. It's a couple other countries um, to the point where the statistics right now say one in every 10 children in the United States is now getting a book from the Dolly Parton program. And the book is sent out for free to the children under the age of five in the county that you're the sponsor in. And we're a nonprofit organization, so we've partnered with them. Dolly provides the books for free, but we have to pay for the mailing, which is about $25 to $30 per year per child. And we're currently sending out about 850 books a month. So we've done doing two fundraisers. We're doing a 5K color run called Run With Your Imagination. And then we have a Lasso Your Imagination, which is a barbecue dinner and uh, silent auction, live auction, and line dancing um, Western theme in the fall to, to raise money. Cool. So. Love that. And that seems to be very close to your heart as a passion project. Well, I started the school 25 years ago now to make a difference in children's lives. And you make or break a child the first five years. I mean, I have my master's in education. I could teach any grade from K to 12 um, in art or K to eighth grade in any other subject. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a certified teacher. Um, but when I was watching my child and then what he was learning in Montessori and how I was learning to teach and everything, I was like, this Montessori stuff is, it's, it's how you do it. And then I started learning more about brain development, and everything. And you can raise or lower a child's IQ by 25 points, depending on what happens to them those first five years. And 50% mm. of everything you and I know today, we've learned by the age of four. And so I'm like, why in the world would I do anything with the older children? Yeah. This is where it's at. This is where I'll make the most difference is with the younger people and set them off into life starting off right you know, with the best education and best, best chance they could to, to be successful. And so that's why I started school. And then when I was presented with the idea of doing the Dolly Parton program, I was like, well, why wouldn't I, then I can affect the county, you know, <laughs> so I'm not just doing my little piece of the pie that that's, you know, just the children go to my school. Now I can affect the whole, the whole county. Mm -hmm. So, Well, um, I love that. That's very, very cool. So I can't believe it, Kay, but we're actually out of time and I have so many more things I want to talk to you about. So I'll have to bring you back for a volume two uh, on this because there's a lot more to talk about. But I would love it. Um, yeah. As we close out, how can people find more about your program, your website, anything that you want to give for connections or how people, how you want people to connect with you and any other final thoughts for the audience? Um, tomorrow's promise.info is our website. Okay. And um, you can get a hold of me at K K A Y E because my parents had to be different and make me unique. Yes. Um, uh, K at tpms.life is my email address. tpms.life, L I F E. Yeah. And tomorrow's promise.info. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, any other final thoughts that you would like to share? Uh, have you ever heard of Amazon, Wikipedia, or um, Google? No, I've never heard of any of those. Most people have it. It's amazing. <laughs> Did you know that they were all by former Montessori students? All of their founders were Montessori students. 
I love that. I knew that about the Google founders, but I don't think I knew it about the other two. Yeah. So the three major things that have changed everybody's way of life. I mean, yeah. We're all Montessori students. Yeah. So I find that a fascinating little fact. I love that. I love the Montessori method. I love what it stands for, how it teaches the calmness of the classrooms, the focus of the children. Uh, we had a recent, uh, another guest on the podcast, Shanali Harrison was mm -hmm. recently on and she also talked about Montessori. Yeah, I think it was 146 maybe or 147. Yeah. Cool. So, and this is going to be 149. So you're right, right coming up. And um, I just want to thank you for taking the time and also being on this journey with me and coming on the stage and, you know, bearing your soul to the audience. It's not an easy thing to do. And you did an amazing job. Uh, I still got a little bit of cash for your effort, but more, it's more about the journey as the person that you've become. And I can absolutely see the transformation in the person. Well, the other thing, you know, I thank you, but also our, our, my leadership team. I mean, they've been on this journey also, sometimes kicking and screaming. Mm -hmm. um, I liken it to a speedboat. And sometimes they're throwing out anchors, trying to slow me down or stop me. Um, and sometimes I've not been very happy about that. You know, I've been just putting more more speed and dragging the boat further yeah. and somebody told me the other day that sometimes the speedboat needs to go refuel and rest <laughs> and That's i'm like true i never thought of it that way so you know i have to sometimes thank my team for throwing out an anchor or two and slowing me down yeah um but uh you know they they have if it wasn't for them and my teachers yeah i wouldn't be here yeah so they they've done an amazing job well thank you to case teachers and team and i hope everybody listens to this and you guys can have a big listening party or a watch party <laughs> and uh i just am grateful that you're here and that you're in our program and um it's been my pleasure to yeah, we're help gonna have you. to we have to do version two so we can tell everybody how we met <laughs> <laughs> okay just let's just tell that story as a departing. We'll tell us the quick version, but let me just suffice it to say that I was in my bikini. <laughs> so you have your mask on. We could just drop. We could drop that as a you know a mic drop truth bomb. Um, so occasionally systems have glitches, and our system that we collect credit cards in and email it's all one system, and. Uh, we had a glitch one time where we sent one person, how many emails, 600,000 emails or something. Yeah. About that. <laughs> and charged your credit card. Uh, about 500 times every time you sent me an email. <laughs> <laughs> so thousands and thousands of dollars and thousands of emails later, I'm in Florida at the, at the sand key VNA in Clearwater. And you were there and you came up. And I had not met you yet. And we were on this live, we were on the same floor. And so I was just coming back from the hot tub with my towel on. And and my side of the story is yeah. I had went to Clearwater and I'm this very shy person. And I'm going to make sure I'm going to stand up at least once and ask a question or something because I'm going to have this Chris Murray person know who I am. <laughs> You know, this is, I have given myself a pep talk for about two weeks that I am going to stand up, you know, or raise my hand or something. And so I ran, you know, I got up that morning with boop, 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 and my phone just won't shut up. There is email after email after email coming in. And I'm like trying to delete, trying to, and I'm like, what do you mean I haven't paid my bill? I'm out of it, you know. And so, because uh, I read a couple of them. <laughs> and so I I go to the hotel and I've checked in and everything and I decide to go get some ice. And yeah. so I'm getting some ice and I round the corner, I almost run into this person. And she walks past me about five, 10 feet. And I go, Chris, <laughs> because, you know, she's got her mask on and everything because it's during COVID. And, right. and I'm like, I'm not really sure if this is this Chris person or not. <laughs> 
<laughs> and she turns and around. And I was in a towel, you know, <laughs> and there's she that. Around. She turns around and says, yeah. And I said, I'm your new best friend. <laughs> and I was like, what? You've sent me 600,000 emails today. And I had no idea. And then of she's course, like, yeah. well, then you're like, oh, well, you owe me two and a half million dollars. <laughs> I signed up for the Christmas for the childcare success academy, so I would get out of debt, not yeah. at prices. <laughs> so, needless to say, I didn't yeah. have to raise my hand at all no. to know who I was. But the next day, I did raise my hand and I did I did participate. Yes, so you would not forgive me. <laughs> you must have put that intention in the universe so hard that you caught back the energy of all of those emails and then meeting me in the hallway, and so. You like, that, that you're very, just, yeah, it was amazing. Because, you're very powerful. You're beyond uh, powerful. And the, the interesting thing that a part of this story is it has never happened before. And the glitch has never happened, never happened since. since. So I am the only person that has ever owed you two and a half million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, I guess. Yeah. Well, it was, and it was amazing how fast it disappeared. I'll say yes. Now, if I could just make the other mortgages disappear. Like there you go. So we'll work on that next <laughs> together. All right, honey. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. Hope you guys liked that story. It was quite something. And uh, I will never forget it. That's for sure. And Kay Boning, you are unforgettable. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here and to be in our group and uh, doing what you do. You are, you're a treasure. Oh, thank you. You are too. I thank appreciate you. it. All right. Have a great evening. Th thanks. Buddy, take care and God bless, and we'll see you next time. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. I hope you liked this episode of Child Care Rockstar Radio. If you did, please share it with someone you know and help spread the word to your friends in our industry and on social media. Child care business success is my passion, and I'm honored to be on this journey with you. As a thank you for listening, Learn more about how to grow your business and make more income with our brand new free quiz, the What's My Number One Income Killer quiz, exclusively for preschool and child care owners. Take the quiz today at childcarequiz.com to discover what your number one income killer is and how to solve it. Take care and God bless.